Hello, I'm not muted anymore. <clears throat> it is 7 o'clock, my time, uh, and time for episode 51 of Unhindered by Cody. Um, hello, is it Sue? Wonderful to see you again. Um, so we're back working on evolution computation stuff in Rust. So we're going to be spending the next two hours trying to begin the process of generalizing um, our evolution computation system, uh, finishing up some work we did on scoring uh, yesterday morning, and then um, I think starting a more top-down approach to uh, implementing a genetic programming system called PushGP, um, where instead of just evolving strings of bits, we will be evolving entire programs. Um, uh, we got really kind of in the weeds on scoring uh, yesterday and thinking about it and conversing with uh, Izitsu in particular on the Discord. Um, I guess we should... Uh, share the discord link again because well hello not now go away yes fine um, discord link copy link put in chat should also be link that is in the QR code here um, I think that in an effort to not get hopelessly bogged down in low-level details like scoring um, I think Izitsu sort of convinced me in Discord, although it took some doing, um, because I was, I was clearly resistant, that, um, probably we want to be a little careful about over-engineering things at this point, um, because I want to, like, get something going, and then we can try to improve the design, but, like, spending forever over-engineering the design up front is probably not uh, the best way to do things. So I think, like, I was spending a lot of time trying to figure out, okay, where are scores used and how are scores used and what exactly do we want to do here? Um, and I think that we could get really lost in that. Um, and so instead, like, actually implementing some working variants of the system, using that to look at, well, what's different, what's the same, and then extract traits and genericized structs and things like that as appropriate, probably a better plan. Um, Cause otherwise I could just spend the next three months trying to build some great ivory castle in the sky design <clears throat> and never actually get it working. And that's probably not good. So, um, but we do want to actually, or at least I do want to uh, try to get the scoring situation resolved. And glad you agree. Um, and it is largely, you know, your encouragement really helped me sort of step away from the precipice there. So thank you. Um, uh, the it would be good to to sort out the scoring and and confirm that we can sort of use. Um, this new approach to uh, test results actually um, uh, throughout the system as it exists because um, I think we did figure some things out yesterday and I would like to capture that and incorporate it before we lose it. I lose it completely out of my brain. So the key observe the key thing from last night or yesterday morning actually was arguably this pub enum test result so the idea was to say that a test result is either a score or it's an error and a score we're assuming up is good in general high scores are considered better than low scores and an error is considered down is good Less error is considered better than more error as a rule. So we're using this enum to separate out um, 
the directionality of a given uh, decision. Um, and then the score struct is defined here and the error struct is defined here. Um, and they both are just wrappers around values of type V um, so that we could change this to be an I-64 or a F-128 or any of a number of things. Now, there was some discussion on Discord about possibly pitching V from all of this and just sticking to something like an I-64. Um, and if we don't do that, then this V type is going to wander out probably all over the place, actually, um, unless it can be encapsulated somewhere as an associated type moving up the food chain, um, it's likely to be all over the universe, which is perhaps not great. I mean, one thing I'm a little worried about is having, um, you know, an evolution computation run depend on 16 types, uh, generic types, um, in, a, in an effort to be like super general. Um, and so maybe this is not the best place to do that. And then things like this V or go away, because if we replace V with I-64, then it will be ORD and we don't have to worry about that. Um, and uh, when we um, genericize individual, um, these are gonna, this is gonna need to be a, um, a test result and a vector of test results, but we won't introduce V here. That would be a win, I think. So, so maybe for now, we'll go ahead and get rid of the Vs. I feel a little weird about that, but I think I'm gonna do that. Um, and we'll just say I-64, because I think, um, uh, yes, I did. Um, so the question is, did I remove the ORD impulse for error and replace them with derives? I did. It turned out that you need to impl stuff for test result because test result, it can't figure out what that's going to be, you know, how to um, uh, relate score and error. At least I think that's true. I guess we could try just deriving it. But, um, oh, but error needs the the ORD. Otherwise, we're going to get the same direction. Oh, I think I got I got a little carried away with myself, didn't I? Um, so I think error needs... I think um, score will do the right thing. That less than on scores will be less than... Less than on capital S scores will be less than on the I-64s. But we want um, impl partial or for error and we're going to need to implement well actually I guess we, do, we just want ORD we don't really want partial ORD um, ORD for error uh, because we should be able to always compare any two errors so we need uh, FN uh, SUMP uh, self other self ordering and we want self dot error dot some other dot error dot reverse so we had that and I must have in a fit of cleaning I must have made it go away and this needs to be an ampersand uh, Hey, very cool. I'm glad that you're finding it interesting. I certainly, I started in a serious way in sort of late May, early June. Um, I had poked at Rust some 
starting probably a couple of years ago, but had really never built anything. Um, okay, let's see. Um, but I'm glad that I've, I've been teaching myself Rust and, and it's been good sort of being here and doing some programming in Rust. So I hope this helps you. Um, so you think I still want partial ORD. I don't want to infer. Now let me think. If you know ORD, you can infer partial ORD from ORD, I think. So I think that in, I think I don't want to infer ORD here. Um, but I think I might be able to infer partial ORD because if we have a total order, that implies a partial order. And I think it can, it can derive partial order if I have order, I believe. Um, in the same way that I think if I have EQ, I can infer partial EQ um, because EQ is a stronger statement than partial EQ. Um, so software engineer of 26 years, very impressive. Um, uh, I am, a, this is 30, my 31st year as a faculty in computer science. Um, so you've built a lot more code than me. Um, and I've used a whole bunch of things, but um, that's the teaching gig. Um, so you're saying it would be inconsistent because it was derived from the fields and not the ORD impl. So you're, so partial ORD won't be smart enough to use this ORD, it would just do partial ORD on the error field. And that's going to get us in trouble. Well, you know, let's, because we can, um, mod test. I don't think, is that the right? No, that is totally not the right uh, syntax. Uh, let me CFG test and then mod test. Oh, Ed, stop. Um, CFG and was it test singular? Test singular. Um, mod test. Oh, you superstar. Um, so if you're right, then we ought to be able to write a test. And what's my syntax again? Because I never remember these things. Square bracket test. Okay. Um, square bracket test. Fun. Um, uh, Score smaller, let's see, bigger is better. Uh, so we'll need to make two scores. Let first be score, score 37, and let second be score. Score a two, and we assert. Um, is there like an LE? No. So, really, oops, I can just assert bang here. So, I can assert bang first, less than second. And I can assert not equal first and second. And I can assert bang. Actually, can I assert, uh, is there a not? Um, no, I would have to negate the not first greater than second, boom. Um, and why am I grumpy here? Oh, cause I, no, why am I grumpy here? Um, 
Oh, I'm not grumpy. Okay, fine. Um, if I run that, that, oh, yeah, I, I don't have compiling code yet, so that would be a problem, wouldn't it? Um, right, so these are going to need to go away, go away, go away, and that's going to then need to go away. Oh, man. A whole lot of stuff's going to have to disappear. Um, getting rid of those V's. Um, and another set of V's. Ah, oh, yerk. Okay, I think that'll be all the V's. Um, do we compile? No, we don't compile line 66. Why do we not compile? Oh, because I still got a V here. Wah, wah, wah. Boom. Now do I compile? Uh, where are you? Test results. Oh, because this still has a V. Okay, come on. There we go. Okay, everybody compiles now. So now we should be able to run the test. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it doesn't remind me of JavaScript and TypeScript particularly. I guess. I don't know. Maybe it reminds me of C. Um, and yes, I probably should have just searched for bracket V. Um, okay, so that test passed. That's a happy thing. Um, and then, where was I? Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, so then the question is, if we do the same thing with order, um, score uh, error, smaller is better. Let first equals error, um, error 37. Let second equal error, error 82. Then what should be true? It should be the case that first is better than second. Because we want um, small errors to win. They should still not be equal. Maybe I should be writing that this way just to be make sure it be a little more consistent in my notation. And then it should not be the case that first is less than second. Um, and let's actually change this to probably amounts to the same thing, but boom, boom, boom. I need the, the test notate notation. Um, yeah, I guess that lat is something that you see in like TypeScript. Um, so that makes, yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, hmm. So, okay, something failed, which could be telling me that, um, is it so is completely correct? Um, so... Oh yeah, here we go. Search and failed, first greater than second. So actually, I think you're completely right. Is it Sue? It must have, okay. So if we take partial ord out of here, now it doesn't compile because we need to implement partial ord which we can do by just calling ORD. Impl partial ORD for error. Partial um, Oh, that auto-completed much more than I expected. Uh, self dot partial sump other. I think I can just do that, right? Oh, I don't want partial simp. I want simp. 
Otherwise, I have just uh, infinite recursion. Um, oh, except we need uh, some wrapper around that. Um, okay. Now it is our little test pass. Think, 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 think. Uh, no, it does not. Oh, first equals second failed. Really? Oh, yes, because I want it to be not equal to. Duh. Not equal to. That would be a lot better. Here we go. Yay! Test pass. Both of those. Oh, whoa! Hello. Uh, oh, same problem. But that should have been not equal to. Good thing I ran those. And test pass. Woo! So that's cool. So you're completely right, is it Sue? Thank you. Um, I didn't catch that. I, I I think I somehow assumed that partial ORD would recognize that we'd implemented ORD and do essentially this. But in retrospect, I don't know why I would have thought that would have worked. And it clearly didn't. So whatever I magically thought wouldn't have uh, mattered anyway. So, um, okay, cool. Uh, so I think, so thank you, Izitsu, for catching that I'd removed that when I needed it and that I needed to implement both partial ORD and ORD. So we now have that score goes bigger is better, error goes smaller is better, and we got a test here that sort of catches that, and that's cool. Um, and so then, actually, since we're writing tests, um, let's go ahead and write a test for, um, now can I just start it, restart the same mod? I appear to be able to? No, I appear to not be able to. Um, Oh, come on, stop that. Yeah, test is already fine, so I'm going to have to make a new module. So this would be like score error test. Ooh, we cannot spell. Um, and this would be um, test result test. Um, and then test oh well, we have to we needed to super use super and I don't really need to bring everything in since I'm only using a few pieces um, so oh right it's a macro ah okay so this is a place where I need my limited understanding, like limited experience with and understanding of macros probably gets in my way here. So yeah, so the derive up here, if I had said partial ORD here, that macro is being given this much information, but nothing else. And it then, builds these functions out of that bit of syntax. And so, as you say, there's no way, if this is all the information it's handed, it doesn't know that this is going to happen later. Um, it's not happening, because it's a macro, it's happening at the syntax level, not at the abstract, 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 syntax tree we've parsed the whole program and we can go looking around for other things that might be relevant here we are a we are acting on a small piece of the syntax tree um which is just this code right here basically the next block is all that we get so yeah well said sir thank you that was actually very helpful um uh so test um, 
something uh, score compares to score and then we'll have to have a test um, error compares to error and then we'll have one more test which is um, uh, error and score incomparable um, okay so we would want to say let first be score score 32 let second score score um, 87 and so we, what we really want here are test results so we actually want a uh, test result colon colon score wrapped around a score struct All right yes and then this is going to be test result score wrapped around a score struct so now both first and second are test results and so we can assert things about them so first should be less than second and uh, first should not equal to second and first should not be greater than second yeah so that ought to do a thing and it does not that's, oh that's just a bunch of warnings but we passed okay um and then we're going to want the same thing but for errors so that's just going to be error and here we expect first to be greater than second and not first to be less than second Oh, and I need a test marker on this or it won't know. Boom. Cool. Uh, so that passes. And now here's the interesting one in some sense. We want, um, ooh, no, I need one. Ah, stop it. Grab all this. Um, so one of them should be a score. Score, score, and then we're asserting that first compared to second is uh, a none variant. Is none? No. thought I thought that was a thing but it is not a thing oh oh interesting so it still thinks that's a boolean well that's kind of let result be first greater than second so it thinks that's a boolean so if I use greater than, I'm not using the partial ORD. Um, so I have to, if I want the partial ORD to get used, I presumably have to call partial comp, I guess. Um, here is in fact partial ORD. Um, let's see. Well, no, it seems to. So that's true. 
if and only if oh so it'll just turn out to be false if we get a none aha uh -huh. and there is there are lt etc methods in partial board okay so in fact we can assert that um, all so that should be false all three of those should be false and I'm missing what am I missing I'm not missing anything. but we should also be able to assert things about le so first dot le second dot is none no that didn't work uh do 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 le takes an other which should be okay Oh, those return booleans also. So really, the only thing that's going to return a partial, an option is partial sump. Okay, so we'll just call partial uh, CMP. Uh, so uh, first dot partial CMP second dot is none. Boom. Boom, boom. Except you're not happy. Why are you not? Oh, uh, it wants a reference. Fine. I can give you a reference. That's not a problem. And assert bang second dot partial some first. Should also be none. Boom. Boom. And oh, I need a test tag, which I clearly not remember to do on my own. And oh, hey, oh, it's a method, not a field. I left the parens out. Um, try again. And lo and behold, that worked. And so, cool. Okay, well, that was a lot of. Uh, flailing with some tests, but I think that was probably useful. So our so our test enum is either a score or an error, and a score will point up as good, an error will point down as good. We implement partial ORD on test results. We don't implement ORD because not all test results are comparable, in particular we can, oh, sorry. We cannot compare a score to an error. That's not cool. Um, and so partial ORD here, um, we can say we can compare to scores and we can compare to errors, but we cannot compare either a score to an error or an error to a score. So in either of those cases, so in the default situation, we'll return none. So if there are comparable, we will compare them and we will return some wrapped around that. Um, otherwise, we'll return a none. <coughs> um, yeah. And since scores are implement or we can just call CMP and we don't need to worry about using partial CMP there, which would just give us another option wrapper, which we'd have to deal with and we don't want to deal with that. Okay. So that's cool. Uh, and then I don't remember if this was here before or not. Um, but I, added a, I think we did this on yesterday morning. I don't remember for sure. Um, but uh, we uh, implemented 
or added a um, uh, test results that was um, a single test result, which was the total score, and a vector of test result, um, which were the um, individual scores. And, you know, thinking about this now, this is potentially not really right. Because this assumes... Well, this doesn't require uh, that all of these things point in the same direction. Some could be pointing up and some could be pointing down. And if that happens, then adding them up to make a total doesn't really make any sense. Um, at least it's not clear what sense it makes. Because um, if some are scores and some are errors, adding scores and errors kind of is incoherent. Um, and the way that enum works... This is flexible in that each thing in the vector could be either a score or an error, but it then is makes this sum kind of not make any sense. Hmm. Mm. Aha. Uh -huh. So, and I was thinking if we did a parameter, then um, so you're thinking this essentially um, where R needs to be well, we'll figure out what R needs to be, I guess, as we go. R is going to have to have some properties <coughs> Uh, there are going to have to be some traits. Uh, it's going to have to be like able to do math, for example. But this would ensure that everything in the vector has the same type as this. And we could pass score in here and we get a vector of scores and a total score. Or we could pass in an error and we get a vector error and a total error. And actually, these names are probably now all wrong. Um, uh, rename symbol so results maybe and uh total result Ooh, i don't know that's not a great name um total uh yeah you're prob probably right however i one of my plans for tonight was to like force the issue by having adding a simple GA thing that does errors instead of scores because I want to see like how this spreads out across the code base. So I actually kind of want to, I'd like to force the matter earlier rather than later if I can do that. Um, uh, total result is not a great name there to be honest with you. But um and so that would be impl r, oops, r, be consistent, um, and we're going to impl r partial ord. Uh, okay, so already we have that we don't know that r is doesn't do eek so we have to implement uh at least partial equality on r um and we are yes as you say we're going to actually need partial ord so that would probably make the most sense um 
So we, it only makes sense to talk about test results being partially ordered if the internal type that's used for total result is partially ordered. Um, okay, that's cool. Um, and we can write some tests for that. I'll do that offline. Um, watching me write tests is probably not very exciting. And now we finally get to individual and we get the question of what to do about individual. So this is where individual was a week ago. And this commented out code is some playing around with some alternatives. Um, and, um, I think we would just want an individual and this is where we're going to end up with two generic types because we've got a genome type and a test result type. So we really kind of get genome and result and this is going to be of type G <coughs> and pub uh, test result uh, is of type R and those two things are then going to go away um, and now that is going to bleed out all over the world because anything that used individual now doesn't compile um, because they only have one generic type and now we've just given them two. Oh, happy day so that's gonna let's see I think I can so here we're going to need, um, oh, I used R down here, didn't I? Oh, poop. Um, <laughs> so G, I still think, is probably better than T for genome. Rename symbol G. Cool. Um, I'm going to make this P. Uh... See, this is, kind of, is there a good name for that? Uh, well, not really. I'll so I'll call it H because it's associated with the um, uh, type G. And then we'll put R, R here and R here. And that all is happy except for self now is so run tests is going to take an h and return so this has got the vec i64 thing built in we really want a test result of type r here and it doesn't like that. Uh, oh, I thought we had made test result take a thing. Oh, test results plural. That was my problem. Uh, test results plural. Okay. So that generates the, and we could call that results, would be better name. And now we're going to construct a genome and uh, I think we just want results. Except for I don't think I called it results, did I? Maybe I should have. Um, so actually, yeah, probably test results is still better. Uh, so we can say test results and then test results. Boom. And why are we not happy? We're not happy because of the typing. Oh, what? I said it was test results, didn't I? Test results, uh, plural. Be better. And that makes it happy. Okay. Um, so 
So I want to implement this for test result score, you're saying, not just R. Oh, yeah. What does this even compile? Because if this, this is supposed to be R, type R, then that would require that this be type R, but it's actually type test results R. Oh, yeah, very possibly. We've got so many compiler errors that we're probably not even aware. So actually, because the compiler is not going to be able to help us right away. Um, uh, I'm trying to think what would be, you know, I think I'm just going to be really brutish. Is this going to work? Yes. It looks like that does. I'm just going to be like horrible and comment out everything in these other files until we get to them and then we will recomment them or yeah bring them back um and lib i don't want to comment out everything because i want the mods to still be there boom okay oh and now oh, actually why are we oh because all these uses fail <sighs> Yeah, and now individual probably fails for the same. Oh no, individual, we're back to individual. Yay. Um, so you say, I would consider just getting it to compile by hard coding it all the test results score. Uh, Yeah, instead of using a generic R. So you're saying in like leave the R out of here and just have test result score down here. And then, but at some point I am going to need to put this in, presumably. And once I do that, it's all going to go boom. And I'm going to have to deal with the boom at some point. So, I don't know, for now, I think I'll just toddle along. And so now you're right. This is exactly what you said it was going to be. Go you. So this is individual um, test result R. Oops. Can I do that? Yes. And it's test results. Oh, but Oh, so just make this return R instead of test results. I see. Yeah, maybe that's better. Because then we're not hard coding test results into any of this, which we don't really want to do. So really, this just wants to be R. And then, okay, and then that all works. Yay, team. Let's close some of these things, because obviously commenting out the whole world blew up some stuff. Okay, so we now have a new that makes an individual and it takes a run test. And that's really what we wanted anyway. This function should know what kind of thing we want and it should make it not have us do rapidy stuff around it here. So I think that seems entirely reasonable. And I think we can ignore this for the moment. So that takes care of individual. 
Now, bit string refers to individual in a number of places because we implement, and so this is where it's going to get potentially interesting. We'll comment that out for now. Um, actually, I'm not even sure why that's there. Oh, because we create populations of bit string things. So maybe you want to do population first. Actually, I think we do. Let's go do po population first. Meow. 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 Because this, a population is basically a collection of individuals. And so we're going to need G and R here. And we're going to need G and R here. And we're going to need G and R here. Um, and does that syntax work? No, I assume that's both of those need to be send. Um, oh, and our, okay, back up. Let's get rid of this for a second. And I should have renamed it anyway. Let me just back up. So let's rename this so we get all the T's. Um, rename symbol to be G. And then I'm going to need to rename this to be H. And I probably, there's probably a place in that other comment that's now incomplete. Okay. And now we would say R send. And I need send here because we're doing things in the population in parallel. Um, and so the genomes and the scores need to be able to move across threads. So I need the send stuff um, or it don't work. Um, and then individual new does the happy thing. Oh, interesting. So nothing in this impl needed to be changed. Um, oh, actually, but this is wrong. So that really needs to be R. Compute score needs to be R and needs another name. Rename symbol. Um, Run tests, I think is what I called it over in individual. Yes, run test. Um, so we're going to run the test. That's going to take a genome and give us an R back. And then. Uh, so this is all winning, I think. And then this is going to need to be changed. So T needs to become G. Uh, rename symbol G. And we're going to need R. R. And G and R on this individual. And that all works. At least it compiles. And here this wants to become G. And that's gonna need to have an R. And that's gonna need to have an R. Be nice if there had been like a refactoring tool that would have just done all this for us. But that's interesting. That one's not being yell yelling about. 
I assume it would get there eventually, but. And another R. And that's all of those. And oh, no, here we got a new, another one. Oh, we got all these Lexicase things. And I don't really want all of these. Um, I think we only want the last one that we decided was the fast one. So I am going to actually be really brutish here and get rid of all but the last one of these Lexicase selections. So if you weren't here at the relevant stream, we implemented four different versions of this Lexicase selection algorithm. And I did a bunch of timing and this last one was the fastest. And so those other ones were only there for the timing study and the timing study doesn't make sense anymore. So I think I will just get rid of that. And I'm gonna change this to just be Lexicase. Um, uh, and then this is gonna to need to have an R and <laughs> aha so we've got some other problems in that we now talk about total score but we don't know aha but we shouldn't need to care because actually we should just be computing max now not max by key. Um, so qu question is, what are we trying to solve with evolution? Um, actually, the latter, mostly, um, building the framework. Um, so the, the general area that um, my friends and I have been working in is an area called software synthesis, where you were evolving computer programs to solve particular problems. Um, and these can range from test problems. So we have a set of benchmarks that uh, a friend of mine, Tom Helmuth, has been putting together um, that are based on introductory programming course exercises. So can we use evolution to pass, you know, computing 101? Um, but these have also been used for um, evolving gates for quantum computers, um, solving, um, like assembling Portuguese tile paintings, developing surgery plans, all kinds of different things have been done with this. I'm more interested in sort of the general framework side of things. Um, and not so much in the application side of it, um, but the application side of it certainly matters. So um, yeah, excellent question. Um, so if um, here we were doing max by key on total score, but we should just be able to do max on all the individuals now because individuals implement um, partial order. Ha ha, look at that. Well, no, it's grumpy. Um, it's not satisfied because there are requirements on the impl of ORD for individual. Uh, so we don't have individual GR is ORD. I thought we did. I removed it and added it. Oh yeah, I don't have an ORD on this. Um, and I had it on individual with score. Look at that. Okay, but I don't even seem to have it there either. So we should implement impl ORD for individual. And so we're gonna have to impl G and R, and R is going to need to have some ORD properties. So R is probably going to need to be at least partial ORD. 
Um, oh, and is Max going to require Ord? Or can we get away with partial Ord? Um, oh, Max wants Ord. That's going to be awkward because we have partial Ord over here. Um, because we were using test result, which implements partial ORD. So I th think your comment about doing everything with score might be the better plan. Because this whole test result thing is definitely going to muddy the waters in a whole bunch of ways that are not likely to be super helpful. So, so this, if, if R is ORD, then we should be able to implement ORD for individual. So, fun, sump, self, um, self, other, capital self. Um, what is the type? I never remember the type. Uh, ordering, ordering, um, and we will return self dot test results dot compare other dot test results. Boom. And why are we not happy? Uh, da, da. Oh, we need a qual really? We need a quality on individuals, and I don't have individual doing equality, so I need to add EQ and partial EQ to individual. And then that will hopefully implement ORD. No, still not happy. Um, ah, I need G to implement EQ also. Is that going to be true up here? Um, interesting so it doesn't require it here even though we derive it I'm not sure I understand that but um, we can certainly say GQ um, does, does it need partial EQ instead of EQ not implemented for individual oh so we will have to implement partial ord as well uh, really why why would we need partial ord here Can't compare the trait partial ord is not implemented. Required by a bound in ord. Well, okay. If you say so, we'll implement it. Fun partial CMP self other and self uh, option ordering um, but if we're actually assuming r is ord again we ought to just be able to say self uh, dot test result so we need some around that sum self dot test results 
dot sump other dot test results. And now partial org is not happy. Why is partial org not happy? Um, oh, because G needs to be EQ again. So Zitsu said, it is just an extension for total ordering. Partial org does most of the actual work. So ord is built on top of partial ord. And then ask partial ord to do most of the work. Oh, okay. So it basically calls partial ord and unwraps the result, converting it to false if if it's a none. That's okay. I think this is a place where my math head gets in the way of my computer head. Because um, I think of partial ord as weaker than ord. And that, you know, in Mathland, you would, you know, maybe have a partial ord and from it build an ord. Um, so let's see, you say uh, those should be probably G partial EQ and G partial ord. Um, no, nope, didn't like that. On the other impulse, oh, this only needs to be partial ord. And this only needs to be partial EQ. Ah, no. Oh, that's because this would have to be partial. Yeah. Dude, oh, hello. Oh, that's because that's going to return us some. So I don't need a wrapper anymore there we go good catch thank you um okay so this file compiles why is there a little underline there um required because the requirements on the impl of ord for individual i don't know why you bothered underlining that but i'm not gonna worry about that okay so now we're back to population. We get to find out where population is unhappy. And population doesn't like max. Because ORD need, R needs to be ORD for this part. Um, and it does not need to be empty for these two. So in fact, I think impl g r board population g r boom. Oops, too many. Mm, you're still not happy. Uh, oh, g has to be equality. Hey, hey, that worked. That's pretty happy. And this is nice because we we can say, we can check for things about the size and emptiness of a population without putting any constraints on G and R. But if we want to find the best individual, G needs to implement EQ and R needs to implement ORD. And that's kind of nifty. I like that. Um, so then here again, we're taking max. Why are we using, uh, why do we have best score here and best individual there? They do the same thing. And this has a better name. I think this shouldn't should this shouldn't be here. Um, I think this just shouldn't be here. Um, boom. 
da 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 boom, boom. And yes, we do need the unwrap. And that's there in case the population's empty, but we assert that the population's not empty, so that shouldn't be a problem. And then tournament, we're again gonna take the max, but over a subset of the population. So we ought to just be able to say max here, um, and we will probably need to say things about our being ord. And now do I want that to be in a separate thing? So really random doesn't need to know anything about R impl G E Q R ord population G oops R <laughs> And that gives us um, that's working. And then here, so Lexa case is where it's going to get kind of interesting. Is Lexa case makes all kinds of assumptions about the score structure and. And so that's going to actually need to be probably a whole nother kettle of fish. Um, we'll probably still need EQ. Actually, I don't know that. Um, now, so if we come back to individual, we had da, 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 da. Um, test results is going to have to be the R. So R is going to have to be test results of R. So Lex case only makes sense if we. have uh, yeah but that isn't happy oh because we haven't imported it um, create individual test results uh, individual individual okay are we happy up here? No, we're not happy. Uh, oh, it's private. Me, 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 me. So, pub struct. And now, is that going to bleed out? No, it doesn't look like it. Um, okay. So, back down to Lex case. So, we're saying that the. the Results piece has got to be test results of some type R. And so this is going to be individual dot test results dot um, results. Boom, bop. And so this name is bad. Let's change it to first results. And this name is also bad. Uh, num results. And then candidates are going to be individual G and it's going to be test results of R, right? Okay. 
Um, I feel like this is one of these places where I could put some, put it like an underscore here and it would figure it out. Is that actually going to, is that true? Um, no, it won't because of the collect. Oh, it did seem to compile and know what was going on. Oh, that's a thing I don't know that I understand very well. Um, like when I can get away with putting just an underscore instead of um, specifying the whole thing. Yeah, I, I don't think I fully grok when I can get away with that. Um, okay. And now I'm going to make that go over there. So then this is, it knows the type of the items. Oh, yeah, because in this case, all we're doing is taking this vac, turning it into an iterator, and collecting it. So it knows the things in, the things inside are of type individual G test results. And so it just needs to know collect into what? And we say collect into a vector. We don't have to specify vector of what because it will just infer vector of whatever the things are that are in the iterator. That makes sense. Cool, thank you. Um, so then, this is not scores anymore. This is test results dot results. And this is test results dot results. Um, and it's not happy about a greater than. I thought R, oh, no, we didn't say R had to be, um, board here yet. Because I wanted to say as little as I could get away with and then see where it yelled at me. Aha, and that made that go away. Cool. And then this needs to be, again, test results, results. Um, I wonder if I really ought to have a, um, um, some sort of get method in uh, the test results type that gets the ith test result um, so that we don't have to like keep digging in because we've got test results dot results like in three places here um, and oh, a fourth place there um, so that could be probably cleaned up I'll just make it to do for now. Um, to do add a dot get test result method that takes an index and let's see, add that method to test results that takes an index and returns. Well, that's not going to really help any. Because we're still just going to have to say dot test results and then dot the name of the method. So that, I, that doesn't make any, any, any sh sure. Uh, I think that's not helping. And so why are we fussy here? Type found. Oh, I bet the type of Lex case needs to be changed. Yes, that needs to be a test results of R so that what we have matches. Hey, that compiles. So that takes.
takes care of population, he says optimistically, and apparently I'm using something I don't need to use there. Let me go away. Um, so now bit strings, uh, I think we can uncomment out all of this and watch the red fly at us. Um, and 114, because we impl, impl some things on bit strings down here. So this is G, so we have a particular G, but we don't specify a, um, uh, a test result type. So I think this needs to be test results. No, this probably just needs to be R. And we don't care what the type. Oh, oh, bad choice, bad choice. Let's get this first renamed to H. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, now we'll see say there is a test result type and then this is going to return our and that's all good now here i said r plus send plus sync. But is there a reason not to say r colon send plus sync here and just have r there? It compiles. And I feel like it's more honest to say up front that this only makes sense if R does those things. Rather than kind of embedding that fact in this compute score. Um, and it was run test that we used as a name, right? Um, run tests. So this should be renamed to run tests. Probably need to go through and look for all occurrences of the word score and error um, and try to make them all go away at some point. But I think that's a thing. And then display oh that's interesting r and now i bet r is going to need to I'll come to that question in a hot second is it sue i think the answer is yes but i don't know for 100 percent sure um and we could take them out and see what happens um So I would have thought that why is this not um, is there a higher error up here that no I would have thought this would have oh there's lots of errors there I would have thought this would have required R well actually this um Scores doesn't even make sense here. Why is that not screaming at me? Uh... So, okay. 
Is the sending sync... Let, let's actually think about this in case maybe it's relevant. Is the sending sync needed? Um, I think they are because the test results that come back from run tests have to be able to move across threads. I think that's why that was there. Um, uh, and then you said, and the plus send plus sync applied to the function before, not the return type generic. Oh, oh, it's the function. Oh, so this is totally wrong, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is completely wrong. So you're saying this. I read this as this. And you're saying, no, 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 no. It isn't that at all. It's actually that run tests has this type and it is send and it is sync. So it's run test. That function has to be able to be passed to other threads because we're passing that function in to... Um, so maybe we don't need it here because we're not even using the parallelism here. Maybe it was necessary higher up. But at the population level, it... It's definitely needed because we process individuals in the population in parallel and we pass run tests around to the different threads. So run tests as a function has to be send and sync. But it may not need to be send and sync here because there's no parallelism happening here. So in fact, this is probably removable. I'm willing to believe that's a true statement. But I still understand why this is not having a howling fit. Because individual doesn't have a scores field. I'm guessing that this is because there's just too many other things that are broken and it's hiding the, the problem here. Um, so maybe we'll, let's fix other things that are broken and, and we'll see if we come back to this. So, implement individual, so does this need to know? Okay, this is using a scoring system. Oh, but I don't even think I use these anymore. Because I think these things are all now on individual. Yeah, I'm not convinced these guys even get used. I'm gonna actually just comment this out for the moment. Um, and I'm going to put it to do over it. Is this even used? If not, remove it. So maybe that doesn't even come up anymore. And then on 227, population bit string. And So this is going to be renamed run tests. Um, and this R here needs to be renamed H. And now I think I just have R here and impl R and run test is going to return R and population is going to have Oh, R has to be send. 
I wonder if that's a mistake somewhere. Could be. No, I bet that has to be that the result of computing the um, tests has to be sendable around. Um, so, okay, so that takes care of that. And it does reveal the problem up above. So that the problem up above was being hidden by those other problems. Yes, okay. So this, we are writing the... So this is really about writing R. So if R implemented display, we would be able to just say self dot results. And then we could get rid of this. Yeah. But I bet, oh, it's test results. I bet that I need this to be, oh, it needs to implement debug. Sure. If it need, if I implemented display, then that would be if I wanted to be in without the colon question mark. But since I've got it in the colon question mark here, I can just use debug. Um, might even want display, but we can use debug for now. Um, and that means we'll lose our pretty printing. So we'd have to implement, so that might be a reason to do display and then implement um, a nicer display option um, to do maybe change R to implement display and have test results have a nice-ish display function. Yeah, okay. Uh, and that takes care of bit string, right? Um, yes. Except for that's red. That tells me we're not done with bit string. But I don't know where we're uh having a problem oh right there parent oh so because i explicitly typed that which i don't really need to do do i i could just say parent Oh, and it, so the a, a bunch of these tests are messed up um, because we commented all that code out. But I think that code was only being used in these tests. So, um, so actually, I think this little block of tests, I'm also going to just comment out because I think they're only being used. Oh, no, come on to test something that I think we don't want anymore. Boom, boom. Make a note um, to do, ooh, remove these tests. If in fact we remove the associated functions. Wah, wah. And now BitString is happy. Woo! Uh, 8.30. Okay. So let's see. We've done individual. We've done BitString. We've done population. Generation, I think, is a reasonable next step. Okay. And close that. And close that. Because they're just like all screamy bits. Okay. So a selector of t is a function, function, oh, I guess this really ought to be g, so let's actually do g, 
change that. Uh, rename symbol G. Um, and that's going to be R. Takes a population of G and R. Returns an individual of G and R. And um, man, we're like all kinds of screaming. Um, and then weighted selector is going to take. So that should become a G. Rename symbol to G and R and R. And a child maker. That's going to take a G. Yeah, Rust Analyzer seems like I killed it. Um, uh, G, R, R. Let's try just reloading the window and see if Rust Analyzer can get back, back with the program. Oh, you lost my whole nifty make things bigger when I did that. Sure, there's some way I could just like say jump to a given size, but I don't know what that looks like. Okay, Rust Analyzer is thinking, but at least the syn the syntax coloring is correct again. Like this was all green. Like it didn't even know that was code, um, and that wasn't a good sign. So fingers crossed. Oh, or not. Uh, we blew up the world again. What in the world is going on? Uh, does this tell us anything? Go away, go away. Um, who knows, right? So, this is gunk in the bowels of rust analyzer so somehow uncommenting this definitely blew up the world but i don't know why there's not that much here why are you... and let's see if we come back to, if we come over to here and we say cargo build We get some errors, but we don't get the end of the world errors. Uh, well, we do get quite a few, don't we? But it's not like the system tipped over and died. And so this is in generation, we expected two arguments, which I would have assumed is true. Um, so I assume that somehow it just got more, things are more wrong than it knows how to deal with. Um, So, and I know I've got to do all this, so maybe I'll just plot along and see if eventually something, well, okay, now we're, well, okay, now we're getting things. Um, it seems to be happier. Or not, I mean, it's still screaming and being very grumpy. Um, okay. And then this is going to be G and R. Um, so, okay, I'm going to think about that question about the trait and second let me grind through the the, the tedious stuff because there's not that much more of it 
um, and see if uh, we can um, get this file to at least compile. Now, line eight. Oh. I left the R off there. And aha. Now we get I mean not not over here we don't, but um in my other window, line thirty-six. Yeah, right here. So this is unhappy because we needed G to be eek and R to be ord. So eek and R to be ord. And that makes sense. We can't talk about the best individual without having an ordering on the test results. Um, and let's get rid of this again. See if maybe that'll like stay out of the way. And then line 63. Aha. So R cannot be shared between threads safely. So I do need R to be send and sync here. So that it can be sent between threads when we do the par iter stuff. Okay. That actually makes generation compile. So now, Izitsu, I come back to your question about do we want a trait here? Um, and I think you're thinking like um, that generation would have would be a trait maybe with associated types. Is that what you were contemplating? Um, You said, you guess not because the functions are still captured and not moved inside the generation. And so by functions, I assume you mean like selector and child maker, um, which are captured. Uh, no, actually they're only referred to in the generation and that's so we can pass references around to them. Um, ah. So. So maybe the scorer could have the the, the type, it could be a trait, and we could have various things implement that score or trait instead of having um, uh, so actually, where do I even define that? Is that all the way back here essentially? Um, Yeah, this function I just got as a function, an FN, which is a trait, right? We're implementing a trait there, but we could implement a more EC specific trait that could be a scorer. Um, uh, and so you, but you don't think it makes much sense. Um, to have that, to have a special, a separate trait for that. But I wonder, if we had a special trait for this, 
then if nothing else, the names would make more sense. There'd be a function that would take an individual and return a test result and it would be called like run tests and but who implements the trait or oh, I guess a different test runner would implement the trait maybe we can call it, maybe the trait would be called test runner um, ignoring for the moment the confusion that would possibly cause with unit testing people um, uh, Hmm. I'm going to make a note and I'm going to press on because with a little luck we can actually see if we can get all this to run tonight. Um, uh, yeah, I think you're right. This question today. Um, oh, so actually maybe the to do well, actually I'll put it here. Should this be a special trait instead of the general FN special EC trait EC specific trait instead of the general FN question mark and then you say when it's added to the generation um, oh yeah so this, this is, I think, what you were, this to do here. Um, uh, instead of passing it in as part of best individual. I think that's where it ends up, right? Oh, that's, yeah, best individual somewhere else. Um, yeah. Okay. This works, um, at least it compiles. Now lib, if we can make lib compile, then we will um, be able to run this again. That would be exciting after all these changes. Um, so line 83, okay, make child here is gonna have the wrong type. Um, so make child is, where'd he go? Hello. So this is where we had the whole score business and that's gonna have to get changed presumably. Um, oh, so count ones and hif are gonna have to be changed. Those are in bit string. Where are. Oh, here we go. Count one. Okay. So count ones returns a vec of IC. Oh, no, because lib actually is going to take that vec and use it to make a test results object or it will need to use it to make a test results object so make child uh, returns an individual and that individual is going to need to be uh, wow okay this is impossible to read um, that's that, that's that, okay. And now this is going to need to be a test results of I-64. If we just hack that in for the moment. And that's going to be a bit string slash test results I64 and this er? oh that's something isn't compiling here 
Uh, oh, I needed another close angle bracket. That makes that work better. This I need to import. Um, then this I need test results. Uh, which is going to be this. So score. Oh, actually, the score is just going to give me the vec. So I'm going to have to actually make a test results thing here. Uh, let's, uh, you know. Um, so we're going to have to test results. And that's going to need to have. Um, if we do that and this, bum, bum, bum. Um, so this is grumpy. Uh, oh, it's test on its field name is going to be a test results, and then and this is unhappy because we haven't don't have the fields, so we need total result and. We just said results and results is going to be. Um, actually, I think we'll just rename this to be results. Boom. And then I need to actually total everybody up. Let total result be results dot sum. Do I have to iter that? Yes. Total result. Genome. Oh, really? Nope, still not happy. Something's bad. Oh, that's because I've got to do that. Okay. Now, line 38, let's go back up here. Vec weighted selector bit string. Why are we grumpy here? Uh, oh, weighted selector. Does weighted selector need? Um, that be in generation. Does weighted selector actually need the? Yeah, because it selects something with those types. Okay, so it is going to need that and um, test results. I sixty four. Boom. Okay. Whoa! Didn't like that. Not happy, probably because the types aren't right. The trait bound test results. Uh, mm -hmm. What about? Test results allocator? No, come on. What is? Oh, 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 oh. No, that's, oh, yes, I put the, this, that bit string needs to be in there, and that closes that, and that, and that, okay, syntax, so, oh, and we don't have all of these anymore, so really, all we should have is this one, because I removed the other ones. And this is now just called Lexicase. Okay. Um, so that's in uh, Lexicase selection. That's in the args thing, I think, right? Go to definition. Yeah, 
So there really aren't. So really, this just doesn't even make sense anymore. I just make that go away. We'll find out all the things, all the bad things that happen as a consequence. Um, we'll make that go away. And then lib. Really, this just needs to be, for the moment, um, vec bang pren popu population lexicase one. Boom. And all of that just comments out. What what da do 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 do. Yeah, since I don't have the multiple things here, it, we're just going to use lexicase and we're going to be good. Um, and then line 14, we try to pull this in, but that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, line 54, uh, generation needs to take uh, test results. I sixty four. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, that part I think is good. And then, no, still grumpy about something over here. Is it? Uh. I think. I'm not sure I see where the problem is now. This is going to be a problem. So test result 64 does not satisfy ORD. Really? Really? Test result 64, I64 should certainly satisfy. Oh, it's only partial ORD. Oh, because we didn't win. Oh, I only implemented partial ORD here. So I think I need ORD as well, which I think maybe I thought I wasn't going to be able to have because of mixing scores, but I think maybe we can do it. Um, if we don't do that, R ORD. Board for test results are fun self other capital self orderings self dot total result dot sump other dot total result and I think everywhere else we did the board before the partial ORD so I probably want to be consistent about that and it's ordering singular uh, okay now that makes this problem go away now we still have this issue. Uh, so weighted expected reference vec fun population to option individual, but found vec fun population vec. Oh, 
So it expected a comma vec I64 and it got a test results I64. So somewhere we need to put a test results in. Uh, somebody didn't get all the things they needed. Oh, right here. Uh, maybe? No? Because I think that's okay. But it's selectors, bit string, test results, population. So this right here is a sign. So new bit string population must be doing the wrong. Oh, yeah, it's because I'm putting score in here. Um, I'm glad you're doing well. I'm doing fine. Um, oh, it's after nine already. Holy moly. Um, I'm so close. I feel like we could just almost get this. Um, yeah, so this I'm passing in score here. And I really need a little wrapper function that makes a test results instead of a um, uh, that's cool um, using PHP again I assume um, so if we said this took um, so score takes a bit string and returns. So we could say this is a function that takes. Ah, no PHP. You're not using PHP then. So we take that and we construct a test results ah okay are you using any kind of framework um in that uh so we'll have total result and results so we need to say let results be what score would give us on. Oh, you need a, t I need a name here. Um, bit string ah. score bit string and let um, total result results.iter.sum and then score down here goes away and uh, my parens and stuff are all like oops, iter quote open close um, oh so you're just doing it all straight up JavaScript I'm, I'm, I'm impressed a bold choice. Um, okay, so that goes there, and this goes there, and now we are almost compiling. We only have one error left. Can I make that one error go away and make it work? What is the problem? Best um, test results doesn't implement debug. Well, let's fix that quick. That's a thing I can do. Um, debug. And now everything compiles. Does it feel? Can we run this? Um, yeah. uh, cargo run. Um, minus minus bin GA the go button. 
<gasps> runs. Those look like plausible answers. Um, minus minus uh, minus minus help. Um, minus 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 target problem. Count ones. Hey, look at that. All ones. Almost instantly. That is really cool. So that seems to work. Ah. And now the million dollar question is will the reverse order work? And I'm not going to think about that now. It is after 9 o'clock and it's late. And for some of you, I know it's really late if you're in UK or Europe. Um, so I think now is a good time to stop. I will have to commit and probably do a little housekeeping. Um, we will return to this. Um possibly Saturday, depending on whether I feel like I understand things well enough to make progress on the web app Saturday morning. Um, uh, I've hopefully, I've gotten some suggestions for some people, so hopefully I can get somewhere on the web app um, and we could actually work on that Saturday morning. But if I feel like that would be a lost cause, we might just come back to this. Um, and so that would be Saturday. Uh, where's my mouse? There I am. Saturday, 10 to noon. And then Sunday, 2 to 4. Um, I think I want to do some air handling. So improve the error handling on the um, segmented file client. Um, so I think we've, that's working. It's a done thing. Um, but I think there's a lot of um, not awesome error handling floating around in it. And I would like to tidy that up. Um, because if we were going to use that as a lab, that would be one of the things I would want the students to sort of do a better job with. And so we might try, we'd use the um, something errors crate on a previous project. And then it was suggested to try anyhow. Um, so we might try anyhow on this one and see where that takes us. Um, uh, so that would be Sunday. And then... Tuesday morning, 10 to noon, will be um, uncertain, either ice repos or um, evolution of computation, depending again on whether I feel like I can make progress on ice repos at that point. And then we'd be back here doing evolution of computation on Wednesday night. So that'll be awesome. Um, so thank you all so much for your help and your participation and your feedback. It is always appreciated. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your whatever today it is in your time zone um, or that you just go to bed and get some sleep. And um, I will see folks on Saturday and we will make awesome software together. It will be great. So thank you all very much. We'll talk to you later. Goodbye.